We think of 1 Corinthians 13 as the wedding passage. It's a passage that get, gets read at weddings. Paul, somewhere along the way, sat down on his, at his desk and he was like, you know, there's going to be Christian marriages all over the place and we need to have something for them to read. So I'm going to write this great little poem on love. That'll be so nice. What a gift I have for them, right? Like, n- not at all. It's great that it gets read at weddings. But Paul wrote it to say, this is who you are to be, not just in your marriage, but in all places in life. And he comes to the end of that list, says these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. He he does a similar thing with the fruit of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Many scholars say, really, there's one fruit of the Spirit. It's love. And all of those other things are just a descriptor of love. Paul is trying to show, he's trying to highlight that the thing that we should be about is love. So you go back to our question at the beginning. Who do you want to be? Who is it that you want to be? The question Paul is driving at here is, do you want to be a person of love? Do you want to be somebody who has sincere love or hypocritical love? You say one thing towards somebody, but then behind closed doors, you act in a different way or say different things about them. Do you want to be a person of love? Now, I'm going to assume that you're going to answer yes, in part because that would be really weird to be like, no, I don't want to be a person of love, right? Especially in this setting. But at the same time, we live in a world that is trying to highlight love. We live in a society that is trying to make a value of love and show that love is really important. And you see this in the slogan, love is love. Right? People have seen this before. It's on like yard signs that go in people's front yards. And at first it sounds great. It's like, yeah, love is love. But we really need to define what love is. Because the subtext of the phrase love is love, it's really people saying, just let me be who I am. Let me just do my own thing, and I'll let you do your own thing. And in our world, love is defined as tolerance. We accept people just for who they are. We let them be them, and that's it. But I would say there's a very different definition of love that's netted out through the New Testament. And it's one, not so much of tolerance, but sacrifice. Two very different things. Two very different things. It's one thing to allow somebody to be who they want to be. But will you sacrifice something for somebody else who you disagree with? Will you sacrifice something for somebody else who is hard to deal with? Will you sacrifice your own comfort for somebody even though it never may come back and get repaid to you? That's love. Love is sacrifice in its purest form, more so than tolerance or acceptance. 